Hello there folks, welcome along to Kingston Park and amazingly, for the final time this season, welcome along to the big preview. Now if you haven't stopped by before, this is the show with everything you need to know about the Newcastle Thunder's next game. All of the news, all of the updates, all of the crack, all in one place. This is the big preview and this is what's coming up on this week's show. The boys were on the road again this past Sunday and it was a pretty successful last away trip of the season. We'll have the highlights from a weekend win over Oldham. A win that takes us into the final weekend of the campaign. Only the table toppers to lose visiting Kingston Park. We've got everything you need to know about the champions elect. And our final interview of the season, Sue. I'll be chatting with Nathan Wilde about the season, the task against Toulouse and him outing a few of the Newcastle Thunder players. So all that to come then, but we start with a look back at last weekend's championship action. The boys travelled all the way to Oldham knowing that our championship status was secure for another year, but also knowing that the Thunder's record against Oldham on the road wasn't particularly good. Having said that, record books are made to be ripped up, and that's exactly what happened this past weekend. So a big win down in Oldham then, but uh, now attention's turned to the toughest test in the championship. Table toppers to lose have played 13, won 13, unbeaten all the way through the championship season, and now they arrive in the northeast to take on the Newcastle Thunder. But how much do you truly know about the championship champions? Allow us. This is this week's In Opposition. <laughs>
So a big test ahead for the boys then this weekend, but a test they're all looking forward to, especially the bloke who joins me for the final time this season, Nathan Wilder. Nathan, we'll come up to Toulouse, I think, in a bit, uh, but we need to talk about the season. Rate it out of 10 for us, and why? What would you give it a score out of 10? What, me personally? Or yeah, like the, no, the team and the performances. Um, so, with our objectives, what we got given um, prior to the season, well, I'd say we're right, well, 8 out of 10, really, something like that. So. Why would that, why would that be? What, what's really, really stood out for you, bearing in mind those objectives at the start of the season? Um, just the must-win games that we needed to win, we got, we got done, the, the job done, like, not some not in the prettiest of manner, but definitely we got the job done, like, and some games that, you know, we weren't favourites and went into come out with a result, so we all around happy with them. Oh, it's gone, really. Where do the boys stand, though? Like, is it satisfaction that you kind of secured championship status with a couple of games to go? Or is there a tinge of frustration in there that at one stage it looked like we could be trying to chase a playoff spot? Yeah, it was frustration because one week you look like, like you're, you're eighth and then the next, yeah. the next couple of results go the other way and then <clears throat> you're back near the bottom. But we, we knew what the objective was and, and obviously it was to secure the championship for next year. So we, we've done that. There, it's obviously a frustration, you can argue mm. that we've underachieved this year, but to throw a group of lads together for championship, it, it's, it is hard. Like, it has been a, a, a tough season and it's, it's coming to an end now, isn't it? Like, yeah, certainly a success on, on that front. Um, personally for you, what would you say a high point? What, what, if you had to look back at this season and go, I remember that day, I remember that result, I remember that performance really, really well, what would you say it was and why? I reckon that... That first home when we got on the year against Sheffield, I think a couple of results um, before in the weeks before mm. didn't really go our way, so it was like nice. And obviously Sheffield had come off back of a couple of good results, yeah. and, and uh, we just we all bought in, and it, it was good. We were celebrating everything, and then the win that that was one of the high, high moments I'd say. And then just after the game was all was all buzzing really. Aye, I won't, I won't ask you to delve into what happened again. <laughs> exactly oh, after oh, the game. Oh. We're not going to try and trip you up here after all, but that's the kind of high point. What do you think was the turning point of the season? Because obviously, oh, I suppose the Sheffield won again, but then we went on a run where, you know, we couldn't really pick up a result. Where do you think the turning point came in which allowed us to go on that run towards the back end of the season? I think we just, we, we um, throw the, uh, there was a block of games, four mm. or five games that we knew was winnable. And um, we aim to really secure points from them and take yeah. points from them, which we did. And then that, that goes a bit of momentum at one point. It was four wins from five and, mm. and it was going well, like, yeah. Given everything that's happened this season, how many foundations do you feel has been kind of put in place for what this club wants to achieve, for what you want to achieve next season for the seasons to come? Lots, lots is always going on and you can, you can tell the foundations are being put in and it, it's exciting for me, really. Yeah. Like, so it's, it's been good, yeah. That's the boring stuff out of the way. We're going to get on to, you know, yeah. the interesting stuff now. And I'm really, really sorry about this, but we've got like an end of season awards due yeah. on Saturday night. That's where the likes of player of the season are going to be handed out. Most improved player, all of that. But these are the most important awards. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm, you know what's coming here. I've already warned you about it. But series of questions. I want you to answer. Be honest. Be ruthless. I don't particularly care. It's end of season at the end of the day. Be ruthless with it and give us reasons why. So you ready for this? You've had a bit of a think of one of them, in fairness, and I'm going to start with that. Who's got the worst crack in the dressing room? Well, to be fair, it didn't need much thinking. It's got a bit <laughs> chapel over others. It's, it's got to be. Yeah. Why? Are they always banging on about the business? Is that yeah, it? But yeah. They, they play all the cards and Yu Gi Oh and whatever else. I, ca I can't even name them, but it's what you're into, isn't it? You, you, you what? Yu Gi Oh, I don't. What's that? It's like you know, Pokemon. Yeah, yeah, similar to all that. They're into all How that. How old so. are they? 40, I think. <laughs> <laughs> no, what are they? 26 now. Uh, so they're the worst crack. Who's got the best crack? Who's the one who's always quite, you know, the entertaining one in the dressing room behind the scenes? I think everyone has said, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, a, he's a good laugh. He's quite witty. And, yep. You know, don't tell him I said that. Uh, <laughs> it's too late laugh, for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can get your own back here, though. Who's the worst dressed? If you say JJ, I suppose it balances out, but I don't know. Worst dressed. Uh, who's Woods. Really? Why? What's the weirdest thing he's come in on? He's Texas Thunder shorts off. <laughs> playing one, these old playing ones. He's walking around Metro Centre and up over there. So, that, that's... 
Uh, if you get free stash, you get free stash yeah, at the end of the day, don't you? And you, you take you take advantage of it. So that's the worst dress. Who's the pickiest eater from when you lads have like gone out and about or barbecue or anything like that? Is there a picky eater amongst you? Mm. I mean, you know what I mean, like that one in the group who was like, I don't like onions, I don't like peppers, or something like that. Well, I room with, with some, the Lancashire boys and Woods is always eating the same paella. <laughs> uh, tell her I'll eat anything. <laughs> she, she also ain't too bothered what he eats, so I'll probably go Woodsy again. Woodsy again? He's getting a bad yeah, rap here. I hope, he, I hope he's winning an award, <laughs> like on Saturday night. Otherwise, this is, uh, this is dangerous. Who's, um, who's the biggest prankster in the dressing room and what's the best prank that's been pulled? It's a tough one. It's gotta be one who's like, you know, that one who's gonna hide your kit or windscreen kit, wipers kit up or something. Is it yeah, Jess Boots? <laughs> <laughs> for about six, the past six weeks, so he, he wins that one, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty decent. Yeah, Groundsman's won, yeah. JJ's still not got his boots back either. Still not? No, Do you know where they are, seriously? Clue. No. Fair play. If the kit manager's watching this, Groundsman's watching this. Yeah, fair play. I mean, JJ's been on fire recently well, as well. Anyway, yeah. mm, fair enough. I mean, that might be the reason behind it. Uh, who's the teacher's pet? Who's the one who always stays behind at training and mm. picks up the cones? And oh, Ev Seymour. So no, he's, all, he's, all, he's not even that side of things, he's always posting his extra gym sessions on his Instagram stories and, you know, like me saying that, he loves it. <laughs> Good, right, okay, someone's been put on notice. Who's the biggest lightweight? Who would you like not go out on a drinking session with because you know they'd be home by 9pm? I suppose that's a bit unfair, there haven't been yeah, too many drinking no, sessions, no, has not, there really? No. I'll tell you what, this weekend, anyway. yeah, hold fire on that. I'll ask you that on Monday morning yeah. after this. Um, very, very finally, if you could head to a desert island with one thunder bloke, who would it be and why? Just one of his whys. Uh, <laughs> not many of them. <laughs> um, Short, <laughs> shortlist yeah. right there. <laughs> um, probably a Kuma, someone like that. Someone, one at senior lads do. Bob maybe, yeah. Yeah. Kuma or Bob, I'd say it's hard to narrow down there. Two, two wise blokes, really. Fair enough. Go with the wise and score the seriousness. We have to round off by looking ahead to this week. And Toulouse, I mean, they are the toughest test in the championship. The league table reflects that. What on earth can you do against a side like Toulouse who are playing so well and have done throughout the entire season, let's be honest? We'll just concentrate on ourselves and make sure we put in the performance. It's last time a lot of the lads will be mm. playing as a group and <clears throat> this week's our last couple of sessions, so go out on a, on a high as, as much as we can really and don't write ourselves off. And what's like kind of the message going into the final one, apart from obviously concentrating on yourselves, has there been specific messages going into this game on Saturday or not? I'm, I'm sure it'll just be enjoy it and, and you know, some lads are still playing for contracts and, and what have you, so it's, that, there's that element, they've got to go out and give it their all and, and everyone will on, on the day, definitely. Top man. Nathan, thanks. Really, really, I really appreciate you stopping by, especially for out in most of the, uh, the dressing room as well. Yeah. At least we now know who, you know, pickiest eater is, yeah. who's got the worst crap. One thing we don't know is who's in the squad for Saturday, which leads me on to, sadly, the final treatment table of this 2021 season. All we have to do is hand over to Gareth O'Loughlin. Hi, my name's Gareth Locker and welcome to the treatment table. As you know, as I watched for the last game, um, JJ went off the field early. Um, he's had an ankle injury, which at the moment puts him out for this weekend. Um, he'll be, we're looking at scans to get him and see where he's at with that. Um, Alex Donahue was the next one that got ruled out uh, for this weekend as he suffered a concussion on the uh, weekend, so he won't be playing this weekend as well. Also, we've had oh, Gilly. You know, Gilly's been playing quite well, but with his shoulder injury, it's ruled him out this weekend. Um, we need to get him back rehabbing before he any chance of playing. Also, we had to rule out um, Maddie Wright this weekend with his uh, groin injury. Um, we're starting to run this week, but he's not going to be ready for this weekend either. So, another injury out for the uh, Toulouse game. Well guys, that's been this week's treatment table and for the final time, signing off, my name's Gareth O'Loughlin. All the best.
And just like that, that is that. Thanks to Gareth O'Loughlin for the final time for the treatment table, to Nathan Wilde, of course, for stopping by too, and of course, to all of our guests who have been on the big preview so far this season. It's been a cracking campaign, it has to be said. Ups, downs, everything in between. But one final round to go, of course. The table toppers to lose. The visitors right here to Kingston Park on Saturday. All you need to do is get yourselves down to support the Thunder Boys. Saturday afternoon, 3 p.m. Hopefully, we will see you there. But from all of us here on the Big Preview, thanks for watching us towards the back end of this season. We hope to see you next campaign. But in the meantime, take care. Bye for now.